So, let's talk multi-universes or multiverses. Now, we know about multiverses because they've been talked a lot when it comes, you know, you know, courtesy of the places like Marvel or DC. And we pretty much had an idea that we might get a multiverse in other places as well. I mean, obviously we're getting a multiverse setting with the upcoming Sonic Netflix series. We've seen multiverses teased or indicated, if not shown outright, by TMNT. But here's a question for you. Did you ever think that perhaps there were multiverses in My Little Pony? Mostly Friendship is Magic? Well, there is. Now, one of the people I subscribe to here on YouTube, Sawtooth, did a video recently talking about this. Um, and it is an interesting subject to look at because when you contrast and compare both versions of MLP or various versions of MLP FIM, you know, to you know what you um, see with the animated series or what you read in the IDW comics or what you read in the junior novels or the mangas and stuff like that, you know, it really gets you thinking and wondering, you know okay, why isn't there any connection continuity-wise between all of these with a few exceptions or hints or even Easter eggs? And why does it feel like they're, the, you know, they're being set in their own separate universe? And that is a good, you know, that is a good variety of questions to ask. And in my opinion, you know, I think Sawtooth brought up a very unique subject because when you take a look at the IDW comic before it started to do the season 10 thing, you know, um, it always felt like it was its own continuity, it was its own, you know, re its own reality, its own world. It wasn't, you know, there was no uh, similarity to, you know, to the, to the animated series whatsoever. Um, there was no real connection, if you will. That is until, like I said, we got to the season 10 portion of it, where basically IDW decided, okay, you know, starting with issue, what is it, 89 or 88 or something like that, that they decided, okay, we're going to start focusing more on the animated continuity because the animated series officially is over, the animation portion, but the comic portion is not, so what better place to continue those adventures, those stories, from the animated series and in the comics. But again, when you take a look at the comics prior to that, it feels like it takes place in an entirely different um, setting, an entirely different, you know, reality. And, you know, there's a lot of evidence of that. There's a lot of evidence, you know, on that, you know, from here to there. I mean, yeah, there's no doubt that earlier on in the comics run, they tried to have some kind of connection between, continuity-wise connection between, you know, what we saw at the beginning of the animated series, series, and so on, you know, they tried to have some kind of connection between the two, but then they went off and started to do their own thing. It's very similar to what the Ninja Turtles did. When the Ninja Turtles basically, um, uh, when their comic book adventures were licensed out to Archie to be published, Archie Comics that is, uh, basically, they started out very identical to what you saw in the, you know, in the original animated series. Storyline and everything was pretty much the same, but then they started to go off and do their own thing. They started to go off and have their own adventures, you know, that were completely different, you know, from what you saw on television. Even though they shared the same character design as what you saw on television, it was the adventures and storytelling you know, in interaction with different characters and worlds and everything were completely their own deal. They were completely their own reality, their own universe. And this version that, you know, utilized those designs, not only were their own universe, I mean the cartoon designs that is, not only were they, the, not only were they their own universe, that is, uh, basically, but they were a lot more darker. They were a lot more violent a lot more mature. Basically, this Archieverse of TMNT was more, that was identical in the character designs, was aimed at a more older audience due to its, you know, settings and its storytellings and usage, usage of like religious stuff and all that. But, 
but still, you know, they were, even though they shared those similarities mostly in the comic designs, lines and everything, it was, they were their own, like I said, their own separate realities, basically their own universes. And the same could be said for Sonic the Hedgehog, one of my most favorite comics, um, if you will. We all know about Sonic Sat AM, the two seasons it had, you know, one of the more underrated, if not more popular, very popular shows of all time on Saturday mornings, to the point that you have a character right now that appeared in both, you know, incarnations of Sonic, if you will, both the show and the comic, that fans want, you know, in other versions of Sonic down the line. But the reason I bring him up as well is due to the fact that when you compare the two, the Archie comics, at first, even doing, well, they were running in conjunction side by side at the same time as the Saturday morning series and the syndicated series Adventures, they were their own thing. The comics of Archie were the same, were their own thing. I mean, yeah, at first they were a blending, a hybrid blending of both Adventures and Saturday M, but then they went off and did their own thing and they were completely separate. Even after the show ended, they were still their own entity. They were completely separate in their own universe. And, you know, that, and basically, just like with the TMNT, some of the stories as time went on started to aim more at that older audience because they were becoming more mature. They were tackling other subjects that you probably wouldn't see be tackled elsewhere. Uh, you know, elsewhere. Uh, elsewhere, I should say. So there was that. So there was that. I mean, even Disney. Disney did this as well. Doing, you know, with the. Uh, during the Disney Afternoon one, they had the Disney Afternoon comics, you know, you know, a compilation of stories, if you will, but then they also had the individual comics based on those shows. And one like, let's say, Rescue Rangers, it was its own thing. It was its own thing. It was completely separate from what you saw on the television show at that time. Because they tackled things that they wouldn't dare tackle in the animated series. The story content and everything was aimed more maturely at an older audience. And even when Boom Studios came back and, you know, decided to continue the story somewhat with an eight-issue um, limited series, even if you were to, even if the show would have come back at that time as well and play side by side, the thing is, this, you would notice the difference. You would notice that the comic book stories were a lot more different than the Rescue Ranger stories of the sh on the animated show, all because of the fact that they exist when you really think about it, in their own universe, in their own reality. And that's kind of, getting back to MLP here, that's kind of what Sartooth was talking about in his latest video. The fact that a lot of what we saw in the IDW comic, a lot of what we read in the manga, if you will, a lot of what we read in some of these Ponyville mysteries and other no, uh, junior novels and stuff, like the Case of Clarity, if, if you will, these are stories that Although they might have uh, an acknowledgement here and there in the series, like let's say, you know, Pinky being acknowledged for her organization of the uh, Party Palooza, uh, you know, in main attraction, which was its own, at, at, the, at the time we thought that its own individual separate, you know, story. You know, even though that got acknowledgement, everything else was its own thing. They were all separate. And, you know, that, again, that's what Sawtooth was bringing up because. When you look back in the early portions up until the beginning of season 10 of the IDW book, there were stories in there that you would think, hey, that would be perfect to be adapted into a future, you know, two-part, three-part, you know, series premiere or finale or, you know, not series premiere, but season premiere or even season finale down the line, but they never, but they never did that. You know, they never did that, you know, whatsoever. You know, they never did that, you know, whatsoever. And why did they not do that? Because they wanted to keep it its own separate thing. I mean, even the writers behind the comic and behind the animated versions as well have said that both sides are their own separate thing. One of the stories that I always thought would be good for an adaptation is the Nightmare Rarity arc. You know, because it was so well received in the, com you know, in the comic when it officially came out, that you would think a gr an, a an animated adaptation for a season premiere or finale would work wonders, but they didn't do that. 
You know, they didn't do that whatsoever. Instead, they kept it they kept it as its own separate thing. The mirror universe. The mirror universe, that arc that they did there. Basically, you think that would you know be perfect to be adapted into a series premiere or finale. They never did it. They never did any of that. They kept them as their own separate thing. The point is the point is basically MLP, even with something like MLP, it has its own, you know, multiverses out there. They do. I mean, I think, in, in my opinion, when I really think about it, you know, when we went to season four and we had that Power Ponies episode, there's no doubt that that was probably teasing us to the fact that in an alternate reality, the main six are the Power Ponies in an alternate reality. And we got to see that manifest do some magical, you know, charades and all that in that episode. The thing is, overall, you know, when you really think about MLP having multi having a multiverse, the evidence, as Sawtooth basically said in his video, is there from the, you know, from the IDW comics before they hit the season ten run. You know, the the crossover they're currently doing with Transformers. You know the mangas, if you will, the you know the the junior novels like the Ponyville Mysteries, things like the Case for Clarity and stuff like that, the origins of you know Cadence, basically of how she became an alicorn or whatever the case may be. The thing is, all the evidence is there. Every single evidence or evidence you would want to you know, indicate that a multiverse does exist, even in My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, is there. It is there. There is no doubt about that. And that is one thing that makes people like me fans of it. Makes people like Sawtooth fans of it. Makes us bronies and Pegasus of all together. Because there is more to a, a franchise like Friendship is Magic than even we could have even thought about, you know, even after the initial animated series is over. I mean, who's to say that the upcoming G5 series is not going to be, you know, looked at as being in an alternate universe? Who's to say, say that? I mean, yeah, there's clues and everything It's going to be within the same continuity as Friendship is Magic, as the animated series of Friendship is Magic, and it's going to take place many years in the future, thousands of years maybe. But who's to say it's not in its own multiverse. What if it, who's to say it's not its own reality? I mean, we all hear these theories and everything about, you know, even here in our reality, in real life, we hear all these facets and theories and speculations by scientists that there could be multiverses that really exist. That in a multiverse, I, myself, you know, could be the oldest out of my siblings. That instead of my oldest, instead of the oldest being my sisters, that I could be the oldest. You know, there could be a reality where my mom and my sisters are world famous singers. And I'm a pro wrestler living out dreams without any problems. These are speculations and theories that scientists have even today in real life. All because of certain anomalies happening, not just in our world as we speak, not, within, not just within the center of our world as we speak, the core if you will, but in space itself. All because of everything they send up there from NASA is able to catch all these different anomalies happening. You know, that, that is how the theory and the speculation of multiverses opens up. And, and, the, and to think that the theory or the talk of multiverses is something that didn't really get, you know, its footing, didn't really get the acknowledgement that we thought it could get, or never even considered it could get, you know, you know, just the thought of it. We never thought any, what I'm trying to say, because I'm doing this a lot, I'm doing this without a script, as you can, as you notice, but the thing is, with the thought and the theory that multiverses could actually be a reality was never even a thought. Maybe it was, but not as prominent, you know, as it is now. And we have things like Marvel and DC 
and Transformers and TMNT. We have all these fictional places to thank for that. And My Little Pony is added to that equation according to, according to what Sartooth is saying. Because there's many different versions. You know, when it comes to My Little Pony, mostly friendship is magic. Like I said, you know, and even Solitude points it out, the comic, for a time, was its own thing. There was a lot of stuff in there that, you know, you would think if it's in the same continuity as the show, they would adapt. They would bring to the screen, but they didn't. They left it on its own. They let it be its own thing. Point is, ladies and gentlemen, just just a thought, and I again give all the credit to Solitude here. Just a thought that a multiverse could exist or does exist in My Little Pony Friendship is Magic is it's just a Pandora's box that's been opened for fans to you know speculate, theorize, and even write stories around. I mean, even Disney fanatic. When she did Bride of Discord and Daughter of Discord, she, at the beginning of each chapter, I don't know when she started doing this, I would say it was around maybe the fourth, fifth chapter of Bride of Discord. But Disney Fanatic would put up a disclaimer saying that this takes place in an alternate reality. That this takes place in an alternate reality, you know, you know, outside did it take place outside of that? Because her original plan, her original thought when she came up with the story was it going to take place in the same continuity, the same reality as the series, but then things changed and they went a different direction, they went a different route. And that's why at the beginning of every, every chapter, from Bride of Discord to Daughter of Discord, she would end up coming out and putting out a disclaimer saying it takes place in an alternate reality because they changed things that made things different from what she was initially planning. I mean, the fact that in her, in her stories, she has Spike being with Applejack and Applejack falling for Spike resulting in that. You know, that right there would tell you that it takes place in an alternate reality, although she wasn't initially planning that because part of the reason she went that route is based off the season 3 or 4 episode, you know, season 4 episode, I believe, a, uh, season 3 actually, I don't know if it was season 3 or season 4, I can't remember, of, Spy of, the, of the show called Spy Catcher Service. That's why she went that route, because she based it off that, and then you know, they went a different route, they went a different direction. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, even if, so the point that I'm getting at is even if somebody like Disney Fanatic can realize, okay, that's not going to go the way I was planning, so I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to alternate, I'm going to change things up a little bit, and I'm going to put a disclaimer stating that my stories take place in an alternate reality that's similar, almost 95, almost 90 percent similar to the animated G G4 reality, but there's differences here and there that make it its own thing. If she, you know, for her to go that route and acknowledge that, okay, I gotta put my mind now in a different reality, a different universe, then so be it. And it just adds to that lore. It just adds to that lore of the fact, of the fact, ladies and gentlemen, that even a fan could take what has become one of the more well-renowned, beloved, most praised fan fiction, you know, web comic audio dramas out there, you know, and turn it into, you know, a um, part of the MLP multiverse because things changed differently, things went a different route in the original that she was basing it in. Then that's just another example, of, like I say, Pandora's box being opened with the thought of an MLP multiverse existing. You know, if you will, existing. You know, as we speak, like Solitude has pointed out in his video. Because when you really think about it, a lot of the stories that take place originally in the IDW comics, like I mentioned, you know, 
have the ability, they have, they have the opportunity, they have the ability to be adapted, be fully adapted into, into the animated series when it was, when it was officially going, but they never did, because both sides, both creative sides said that they're all separate things, they're all separate things. And I do apologize for the wind now picking up. But like I said, there's our own separate deals. And you know what? That's a good thing. You know what? That's actually a good thing. In the end, when you really think about it, that's actually a good thing. It's actually a good thing because, like I said, it opens up that Pandora's box that allows fans like me, like Sartooth, like Disney Fanatic, like many of us, to explore other different possibilities, theories, speculations and opens the door even wider for us to show our creativity when it comes to wanting to write web comics or fan fiction. So it even opens the door for the official for the official licensed products to go around safe, to go in directions they never thought possible. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know what your thoughts are on the fact that there are MLP multiverses out there based on Friendship is Magic. What are your thoughts? Comment down below. Give me your thoughts and opinions. Check out Sawtooth's video on it. I will link it at the end of this video so you guys can check it out. And Sawtooth, hope to see more, more of these kind of videos out of you. But let me know what your thoughts are down below. Comment if you like, and I am out.